بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم In the name of Allah the most gracious the most merciful السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم In the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala most gracious most merciful Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen All praise is due to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Lord of the worlds Wassalatu wassalamu ala ashrafil anbiya'i wal mursaleen Nabina Muhammadin wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in Complete blessings and salutations upon Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam His entire household All his companions May Allah bless them all and bless every single one of us Ameen My brothers and sisters A beautiful occasion of Jumu'ah Here in this beautiful masjid in this suburb of Arcadia in the beautiful country or city of Harare in the country of Zimbabwe. We thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for giving us the blessed opportunity to be seated here in peace. And it is our duty to uphold this peace and it is our duty to ensure that it remains. This peace will only be able to be prevalent if we are at peace ourselves. And if we understand where we came from, where we are right now and where we are heading. You and I know that there are xenophobic attacks happening in South Africa as we speak. It is absolutely unacceptable. And the route goes back not only to racism or reverse racism as it may be called, but it goes back to the lack of understanding of who human beings actually are, where we came from, and how and why we are different. And this answer is given by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the Qur'an. Ya ayyuhan nasu inna khalaqnakum In Surat Al-Hujurat, Allah says, O oh mankind, we have created you. O oh mankind, we have created you. You are not just a coincidence. You are not just here by chance. You did not just come about to be by nature. Allah says, we made you. We created you. There is a purpose. And there is a certain way within we created you. So in some verses, Allah makes mention of the purpose of creation. And in other verses, Allah makes mention of the method of creation. So the verse that I just recited or began reciting, the verse of Surah Al-Hujurat where Allah says, O oh people, He's not addressing the believers alone. O oh mankind, we created you. Meaning, I am the one who made you, O oh mankind. From what and how and why? So Allah says, From a single male and female. So this is one of the stages that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had chosen for your creation and mine. I need to understand it. Everyone seated here, we share one father and one mother. Whether you like it or you don't like it. Whether you get along or you don't. We share one mother and one father. And before that, in another verse, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks of, وَلَقَدْ خَلَقْنَا الْإِنسَانَ مِنْ سُلَالَةٍ مِنْ طِينٍ How he created mankind. This is a verse of Surah Al-Mu'minun, where Allah says how he created mankind from Soil from dust. So dust then mixed with moisture becomes soil, then mixed with water becomes clay. And from clay, a, f a formation was made, the shape of man. Allah says, and this is a hadith of Muhammad sallallahu Allah created Adam in his image. Did you hear that? Allah created Adam in his image. That hadith is correct and it's authentic. What's the meaning of it? The Christians think that Jesus is God and God is Jesus. And God looks like Jesus and Jesus looks like God. That, that is already contradictory. But anyway, and then they say mankind and God look alike. That's what God is trying to say. That God created him or man in his image. So we Muslims understand it very differently. We believe that Allah created Adam in Adam's complete image. Not in Allah's image. You need to remember this. Because... We were all created from a seed. I'm talking of my personal life and your personal life. Semen. You know of a fetus or a zygote, a fetus. Then a little baby is born. That was not in an image. That was from a droplet. That was from blood, which mixed. And then it became something. And then it was given birth to. But Adam was the first one. He was made in full image, full form. That's what Allah is saying. He was the first one. No sperm was involved. No ova was involved or ovum. Nothing, no embryo, no zygote, no fetus, no childbirth. He was created in his image. Long, 
Mashallah. So long and he was placed. This is the meaning of Allah created Adam in his image. The term his goes back to Adam. It's a pronoun that goes back to Adam and not Allah. So the Christians say God created Adam or Jesus in God's image. We say no, it's actually in Adam's image. So they would say, well, what's the point of mentioning that? The point is Adam was not created through sperm and through an egg of a female, which then fused to create a gamete and then a zygote and a fetus and so on. No, he was complete. He was a human being. Soil was taken from various parts of the earth and it was brought together, the dust and the soil, the different colors. And these are the genes. Nowadays, when you talk of genes, people think it's something you wear. But before those genes, there were other genes, mashallah. And those are the genes that happen to be within your blood, your system, your DNA. So there is brown, there is black, there is pink, there is yellow. There are so many colors of soil. Whatever the colors of soil are on the earth, those are the colors of human beings. Did you know that? That's the color of human being. Why aren't we created purple? None of us born purple, subhanallah. None of us are born, for example, green. Because the soil is not green. On earth, you won't find green soil. You won't find purple soil. We are created from soil. Evidence of that is the color that you and I have. You have dark soil, light soil, you know, and this color soil, you have yellowish, that which is mixed with gold and that which is not. And nowadays, mashallah, platinum as well. Alhamdulillah. So it's amazing how Allah has created us. It's something unique, but we need to remember this. Allah has created Adam in Adam's complete image. Do you hear what we're saying? Which means Adam was given the nose and the eyes and the ears exactly where they are as the image of Adam, exactly by Allah. And that is the best. And this is why Allah says, لَقَدْ خَلَقْنَا الْإِنسَانَ فِي أَحْسَنِ تَقْوِيمِ ثُمَّ رَدَدْنَاهُ أَسْفَلَ سَافِلِينَ إِلَّا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَعَمِلُوا الصَّالِحَاتِ فَلَهُمْ أَجْرٌ غَيْرُ مَبْنُونَ Surah Al-Teen That surah which is named after the fig. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Indeed, we have created man in the best of postures. We made Adam in Adam's image. What was that image? It had hands in the perfect place, fingers, thumbs, toes, whatever else, perfect place, private parts in the perfect place. Can you imagine your private parts in another place, my brothers, my sisters? Astaghfirullah. Astaghfirullah. May Allah forgive us. So Allah is saying, look, I made you. I know what I did and where I did and why. Imagine your belly, subhanallah, where your backsides are. Astaghfirullah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us. And I'm saying this just to make you think. I know you might think I'm, I'm saying it. But yes, we can laugh about it because it is worth laughing about. Because it is absurd. It is unthinkable. Allah's gift upon you. Imagine your eyes, your, your nose. Imagine, you know, my mind is actually now floating elsewhere. But we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to forgive us and to grant us the ability to understand. When Allah says, I made Adam in his image completely, which means I gave him the form, I gave him the surah, I gave him the entire image of his own. The hair is where it is and the toes are where they are and whatever is in between is where it exactly we placed it. That's the meaning. So that was Adam. Let's move on further because the subject that we are discussing is the root of man and how we are all connected and related. So now comes this man created lonely, he's praying for companionship and somehow Adam was given a blessing of a companion as a female. This was all part of the plan of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He prayed and he was granted Eve, Hawa, may peace be upon her. And how was he granted Hawa, may peace be upon her? He was granted her through the creation via his rib. Of a female. Some people are saying, oh, that's an insult to women. You know, how can you say that um, uh, a woman was created through the rib of a man? Well, I want to tell you something and I've always said this and I maintain it. If you are saying that it's an insult to be created from a rib of something living, we would then be able to say you might consider it a bigger insult to be created from dust, from soil, which is dead. It's got nothing. I mean, soil, we trample all over it. We don't trample all over ribs of human beings. So it's got nothing to do with what you were created from because it was not your choice. It's got to do with who you are today. We become worse than any form of insult we think happens to be against us the way we act and behave. That's what it is. To one another, if I was created even from gold, but the fact that I'm hating you and killing you and fighting you and I've got so much of bad qualities, it makes me worse than one who's created from 
anything bad or derogatory I can ever think of. So it's got nothing to do with what you're made from. It's got to do with who you are today, the condition of your heart, the fact that you believe that you were made and you believe in the one maker alone and you declare his worship alone. That's what Islam is all about. So when he got up, he saw a female and he thanked Allah for this female. And he asked her, according to one of the narrations reported by Ibn Kathir, rahmatullahi alayhi, who are you? She says, I am Hawa. Hawa means someone created from something living. See? So he says, and why were you made? Why were you created? And she says, to give you company, to give you comfort and company. Comfort and company, mashallah. A lot of people get married today, they lose their comfort and they lose their company. Allahu Akbar. Private limited, no longer, mashallah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us. When we marry, we are marrying for comfort, for company. Remember that both male and female, it's not just one-sided. With all respect to the males and with all respect to the female, fulfill your right. Bring in someone's daughter or son into your marriage with the idea that we will be a means and a source of their comfort and companionship in the most beautiful way that we will be obeying Allah's instruction. This is what it's all about. Enjoy it. Understand it. You will have children, mashallah, from that relation if Allah wills. If He doesn't, you won't have kids. And if you don't have kids, thank Allah. It might be the best thing for you. We are mu'mineen. Ajabal li amri al-mu'min. Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa says, true believers, their affairs are amazing. Because when something good happens, they thank Allah, it's better for them. When something bad happens, something that happens not against, not according to their will, they are patient and it's better for them. They always believe that what Allah does is best for me. Imagine if you were to have, uh, you know, children, like I had an example of someone who desperately wanted to marry another person. And this person didn't want to marry them. Imagine one sided, it's like the guy who comes along and he says, hey, I'm getting married to the king's daughter. Oh, a poor man, and you know, walking on the street without even shoes. And he's saying, I'm getting married to the king's daughter. So people asked him, hey, so is it all arranged? Yeah, 50% is already done. Just make dua. The other 50 is left. So they said, what do you mean? He says, no, I've agreed. Now just make dua that they agree. <laughs> Subhanallah, that means any one of us could be thinking that way. 50% done. Come on, man. So may Allah, may Allah bless us. If that's not meant to be, Allah knows it's not right. Allah knows, subhanAllah. But that having been said, my beloved parents who are seated here, remember it's an issue of racism. And it's an issue of, on the other hand, following the command of Allah. So which one do you choose? You want to be a racist or do you want to follow Allah's command? If your child would like to marry from across the river, from a different tribe, from a different race, for as long as they are decent mu'mineen with a similar upbringing, let it happen. Remember something, all these lines we have today are actually colonial lines. You need to know this. The countries, and this is the point I'm trying to raise about xenophobia. All these lines we have here in this part of the world and wherever they are, they're actually colonial lines. They were put there for a purpose and that purpose is division and war. That was the initial purpose. It's to create division between you and me. Who am I? I'm your brother. And if I feel it, alhamdulillah, if I don't, I'm ignorant. I'm a fool. If I don't feel that I'm your brother, no matter who you are, you share with me one mother, one father. Subhanallah, I'm a fool if I don't feel that. Wallahi, you can be a different color, different nationality. That's got nothing to do with whether or not you are part of my family. We are one family. Subhanallah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us ease. May He open our doors. So He asks her, Adam alayhi salam asks, so why are you created? She says, to give you company and comfort, subhanAllah. And he was so excited and happy. And from there they had children. The children were different colors and there's a long history of it and we don't want to get too deep into it. But then came the time of the Prophet Noah. Do you remember Nuh alayhi salam? There was a huge flood at his time, remember? Everyone was wiped out. Everything was wiped out. According to the majority of the narrations, everything was wiped out. Humankind was gone besides who was with him in the ark. And he was the only one who had children. The others, the other 11 fellows who were with him, or according to some narrations, 80, they didn't have kids. None of them had children. He was the only one. Allah says it in the Quran. We made his progeny, the only one that remained. That means my brothers and sisters, I'm not just related to you via Adam and Eve. May peace be upon them. I'm related to you via Nuh. We are all descendants of the Prophet. So when someone says, I'm from the family of the Prophet, you can also get up and say, I'm also from the family of the Prophet. Maybe not the Prophet Muhammad ﷺ, but definitely the Prophet Nuh. Aren't you, aren't you all from the family of the Prophet Nuh? 
Don't be shy to say, yes, I am. Now when we walk out of here, don't drink. Remember that, alcohol. Don't go to the casinos. Don't go to the nightclub. You are from the family of the Prophet. Nuh, may peace be upon him. Remember this. How can we live our lives in such a way that we, are, we know we are from the family of the Prophet Nuh? Hey, I see all the smiles. Wallahi, the brothers, I love the smile. Everyone's learned something new today, haven't we? I come from the family of the Prophet. Go and check your lineage, mashallah. You do. We are all, without exception, from the family of the Prophet Nuh. May peace be upon him. Doesn't it make you feel good? Now come on, cut that adultery out. Allahu Akbar. Cut the alcohol out. Come on, cut the gambling and the fighting out. You are from a noble family. Allah created you with nobility from the noble. Subhanallah. Remember this and remember it carefully. You need to be happy in yourself. I come from a very noble family. Allah chose me good family. Maybe here people think I come from here and there. But I know that and Allah knows that I'm actually a noble person. That's what we all need to remember. So... After that, that was the progeny. And then he had some children, three main children. And, and they spread across the earth and everything happened and so on. And then Allah is reminding us, Oh man, this was the verse I started with. We created you. From a single male, single female. I already told you how that started, right? وَجَعَلْنَاكُمْ شُعُوبًا وَقَبَائِلَ لِتَعَارَفُوا and then we split you or we made you. Ja'ala means we created you, we made you into different tribes and nations or peoples in order that you recognize one another. So why am I this color? Why are you that color? Why is he that color? Why is she that color? Why is this person the other race? Why is that person? People who come from Europe have a different color, for example. People who come from Africa are different. People who come from Asia and Far East Asia are different. What's the reason? Allah says, in order that you recognize one another. Imagine, I look different. That's why you know me by my name. You look different. I know you by your name. If we all looked the same and we were all exactly the same, trust me, we would have to stand like... Like a production line with all serial numbers on each other. Subhanallah. 35, come here. 36, go that side there. 37, please can you get up. 38, there's food waiting for you outside. That's how we would be talking. All look the same. And then what would be the, the, the feeling of the spouse? You don't even know. Everyone's the same. When you get to 18, you drop out of the production line with a partner. Doom, gone. Two of you, doom, gone. You know like when you've got cogs and the two cogs come together when it comes to a production line. And it's amazing how, uh, you know, the, the, the machine is then made. So the two come together and the machine is made and then it drops out of the production line. Someone just checks the day, it's working. Yes, it is, carry on. That's how we would be. Allah says, I did you a favor by making you different. Your complexion is different. Some people like very dark complexion. Some people like light complexion. Some people like... People whose eyes might look a little bit this way and that way. Some people like green and blue. Alhamdulillah, whatever it is in terms of eyes and hair color and so on. Allah made diversity for you to enjoy your life. For you to ensure I recognize you. Brother, your name, I know it. Why? Because I know you look different. So Allah says we made you different. Not because one must think, hey, I'm a better man than you. No ways. We are all interdependent. Remember, Africa is the richest continent on earth. Did you know that? It's richer than the Middle East. Did you ever know that? in terms of minerals and resources, far richer. It's just that we haven't yet extracted it. And if we have, sometimes there are certain politics that are involved in extraction by certain parties that might be interested in earning it for themselves without sharing it with others, whatever it is. It's not my topic, but it's a point of interest to say, look, we are wealthy. Allah kept us wealthy. Allah's kept something with us. But guess what? Allah has told us the wealthiest of you is the one who is the most content, the happiest person. Got nothing to do with money. And the proof of that is, look at the richest people in this country. They are sad. And I can take you names, 10, 15 names coming one after the other. A lot of them cannot sleep. A lot of them are very, very, their life is depressed. They don't enjoy lives with their families and children. They are sad. And sometimes the poorest of the poor, they are so delighted. They are sitting there, you know, with so much in terms of goodness and their children and spouses. And they are so delighted. Yet they live in a little hut somewhere in Dotito. Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. It's a gift of Allah. So Allah is telling you, we've given you, but we need you to know there's a bigger plan. Remove hatred from your heart. Remove enmity. Understand that I am different, not because this and that, and because I'm supposed to be a person who's higher in terms of, of, of uh, you know, status and so on. No, it's from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I need to understand and realize. I think we've got a power cut, you know. 
We've just talked about it today. There was someone who actually messaged me saying, oh, we're struggling with power cuts and we don't have water. And, we, and I said, in Zimbabwe, we've been through that and we've been through so much that now when there's no power, we carry on speaking like nothing has happened. Don't you agree? <laughs> And when there's no water, we just carry on because mashallah, we just continue. We've got a few little drums all around. People don't understand. Yet we are happy. How many of us are happy? Can we say Alhamdulillah? <laughs> Look at that. And brothers and sisters, we don't have electricity. Alhamdulillah. We thank Allah for this. So this is the thing. It's relative. You can have electricity and water, but you still will have a mosquito coming to you. Tsing! You know that sound? You won't sleep. And you can have no electricity, no water, and you are snoring so much that the people next to you need to poke you to say, Hey brother, <laughs> you're disturbing. I hope it doesn't happen between spouses. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala safeguard us and help us. So getting back to the xenophobic attacks, and that's what we started with. We need to understand we are part of one family. We are really part of one family. We have the border that is made or the crossings that are made. You know, these lines, that these are colonial lines. We will help one another. You need me, alhamdulillah. I will try my best. I, the day I need you, I know you will try your best. Imagine if something happens and there is a car crash in front of your eyes. What would you do? Be honest. You would stop and try and help, minimum. You know, really. I know nowadays they say when someone is drowning, everyone takes their phone and, trust, and takes photos. They forget about saving the person. But that inshallah will not be the case with us. May Allah forgive us. May He grant us goodness. Imagine if you are struggling and there's something happening and you are shaking to try and protect your life. There will be someone, never mind their color and their nationality and no matter what, they will come and help you. They will come and take you out of that muck and they will assist. That is human, that is the minimum human right or should I say humanitarian feeling that you have within you. No matter who you are. There could be a drunkard who's just been crashed, for example, and if, he's, if there's life in him, there's hope, we will go, we will try and help, we will phone, we will do something. Obviously, different people can do different things. I don't even know why I'm still holding this microphone when there's no electricity. <laughs> but I don't want to br break the flow of my talk, my brothers and sisters. Subhanallah. So, my brothers and sisters, it's something we need to enjoy when it comes to looking after one another, speaking to one another, smiling at one another. Let us never ever you know, I may not be able to do much about how people think back in South Africa or wherever else and why this has happened and so on. But what I can do, and that's what I am doing right now, and that is to talk to you all and to tell you, never let that creep in your heart, no matter what. Don't. You might be struggling. That doesn't mean I hate this guy and I hate that guy. No, 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 not at all. Do not allow hatred to overtake you for one another. And the Prophet ﷺ has said that quite clearly. لا تحاسدوا ولا تباغضوا ولا تدابروا وكونوا عباد he speaks about how important it is to protect yourself from mutual hatred, to hate one another, to cheat one another, to con one another, to turn away from one another. He says, be brethren in, in the cause of Allah. You need to be brothers and sisters, subhanallah. You need to be brothers and sisters in the cause of Allah. Not just selfishness, you know, I, I don't like this person because of X, Y, and Z. No, understand is a broader picture. We will have differences, yes. We will have disagreements, yes. All that is part of your test. You need to continue. You need to continue to explain. You need to continue to try. You need to continue to be a human being. Be mature. A mature person is he whom, when he has big differences with you, he still calls you. He still wants you to sit around the table. He still wants to meet with you with respect. He still wants to sort the matter out. And the day it comes that we cannot sort this matter out, we say, you know what? I disagree with you with respect. That's it. I don't agree with you on this point here, the, this matter here, or even if we say, listen brother, I don't wish to deal with you anymore, alhamdulillah, but it's okay, you go your way, I go mine. That is a dignified way of splitting, very dignified. It's like when a divorce happens. The worst divorces are those where the people act worse than animals. Worse than animals meaning you want to engage in mudslinging after the divorce for years on end, where you've never ever forgotten, hey, this person, I it was divorced from them. I got to, you know, mudsling for the rest of my life until kingdom come. Astaghfirullah. And the children suffer. And you say, no, if you go and if you go to your mom, that's it, you're a dead person. I don't want to see you again. Or this is what will happen to me. Why do this? You need to learn from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's plan. You need to learn from the lives of the companions of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. It's beautiful. It's something amazing. Even if a, 
If a divorce does happen, let it be with respect. Listen, you go your way, alhamdulillah. Let me go my way, alhamdulillah. As for the children, nobody will agree as to what will happen. But because they are our mutual kids, we have to put our pride behind our backs. And we have to say, this child is mutual. Therefore, whatever Allah's law is regarding the children, we surrender to it. That's what it is. And that's how it's supposed to be. And this is where success will continue on earth. That person might become a beautiful person as time passes. Who knows? And that person might not be a beautiful person. But it doesn't mean you need to harm them and attack them and hit them. This is the intolerance not only amongst the Muslims. There is evidence that it is even amongst the non-Muslims. Even amongst the Christians and the Jewish people and with whoever else. Anyone who does not understand that plan of Allah within their heart, they will have within them qualities that... Really, they would need help regarding. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us all ease and goodness. And may Allah open our doors. Inshallah, we'll proceed with the salah. I'll try and raise my voice as loud as I can, inshallah, so that the, the sisters can also hear the takbirat and so on. But inshallah, uh, I end at this juncture. I hope and pray we've learned a lesson or two of love, of the fact that we are all rooted, the same root. We all are descendants of the Prophet Nuh alayhi salam, and we do not have any virtue one over the other. لا فضل لعربي على عجمي ولا لعجمي على عربي ولا لأبيض على أسود إلا بالتقوى. The hadith makes it very clear. There is no virtue of an Arab over a non-Arab, or a non-Arab over an Arab, or a white over a black, except by taqwa. Taqwa means Meaning if you are close to Allah, you are a better person in the eyes of Allah. But between you and I, we are equal. My means of entry into Jannah might just be serving the rest of humanity, no matter who they are, respecting them, giving them that, that dignity. And this is why we say, protect yourselves from racism. A lot of us have a problem. And I want you to go home today and think about it. You know what the problem is? Without knowing, we are actually racist. Without knowing. Sometimes we think I'm not a racist, but hang on, hang on. Do you think of yourself as a person who's closed into a certain circle and these are those and these are me and this is it? No way. If that is the case, there is a whiff, there is a smell of racism that you need to get rid of. You need to love, you need to embrace, you need to understand. You really need to be part of one huge family and you need to fulfill each other's rights. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant me the understanding and may he grant us all the understanding. May he grant me improvement and may he grant us all improvement. Wa sallallahu wa sallama wa baraka ala nabina Muhammad.